Hello ladies and gentlemen, nice to see you today. My name is Dustin Cormier and you're watching an episode of How to Rock Astrology. Today's episode we're going to be talking about the natal position of Pluto in aspect to Saturn. This it can be a hugely uncomfortable transit which can bring great rewards in the same way that the more weight you lift the more the more pain you experience the more you gain in weightlifting similar can be said here with regards to the pressures of dealing with pain itself uh, how do you deal with pain how do you deal with the pressure of pressure this is the transit that can really make or break a lot of everyone's capacity to resolve their karma in this life and in the string of lives that are involved with this placement in the transmigrating schema of the soul. This might be a person who has had many lifetimes uh, <clears throat> attaching themselves to things other than their most essential duties, their most essential priorities on earth. And now this incarnation has had enough and there's karma due where hard work needs to be done. And we're going to explain a little bit of this in terms of what I talk about as self-realization being a train that is crashed. And you need to get through, let's say you're at the bottom of the train, you need to get through all 12 cabins of the train in order to make it to your family or to the front of the train where you can go into liberation and freedom. You cannot just wish yourself to the front of that train. You cannot just plan and just hope that it's going to happen by itself. You can't skip trains. You have to diligently go through each train, each cabin, each material world texture, each material stage for the spiritual experience. And this is what Saturn is teaching us the whole way through. And so anyone with aspects in this regard will is likely to have some kind of confrontation confrontation with futility with feeling frustrated and feeling like things are futile things like there's pressures on top of you which are not your fault which are just you've been born into and which you have have you have your hands tied behind your back so all you can do is this annoying responsibility of course usually when it comes to pluto aspects we must remember that there is a huge emotional security, an internal subjective sense of being uh, put under power, of being powerless. When in reality, the pressures that might be being placed on you might just be another regular Saturn. It might just be the same old thing. You might feel a deep futility in movement at all. Saturn is the planet of movement, as we're going to describe through Ernst Wilhelm's Graha Sutras. Saturn is very much, in a sense, the mobilizing element, the air that sweeps action into every chart. Mars is actually uh, more of a turnstile, more of like a filter for the essential raw energy of Saturn. Saturn is the actor Mars's rational logic and reason finds the most effective ways to put this action, but it needs to have something. Mars needs to have something to refine. It needs to have some kind of action to discipline in order to put to its best effect. If Mars doesn't have Saturn, duty, responsibility to something outside oneself, then there will be nothing for the Mars discipline to apply itself to. So Saturn is really the mobilizer, the, in, the vitalizer of the indriyas, the senses, and the sense organs of, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Movement, anyway. So when it comes to Pluto with regards to Saturn, you might feel, because of the Pluto element, this internal emotional security that has been impressed deeply lifetime after lifetime, there might be an emotional security involved with either being, you know, there might be an, like you might at some deep emotional level in the past have been traumatized to accept 
that there are powers stronger than you, bigger than you, more important than you, moving the chess pieces of your reality and your existence and the world around you. This is the, tr the facts for everybody, but everybody has the ability to be their own individualized chess piece in this game of chess pieces being moved by elements larger than ourselves, social, collective, evolutionary forces, just the forces of the world. And the forces in us, and the forces of astrology, our own elemental alchemy. These are things that are we can't control, that come from our past lives. Saturn's a planet of karma. So everybody has forces that they, everybody's a, a fly and a spider in the spider webbing schema of a night, you know, Everyone is their own spider web, which is just a glistening particle of another spider web, which is just a glistening particle of another spider web. And everybody has to find their place. And even we are a spider web, which has to play spider to a, a chess game of flies that we are controlling. That's our own body. That's our own people in our lives that we have to move ourselves around. That's our the people that work underneath us, the authority that we have in the world. So we need to be a fly for the bigger spider web, as well as to be the spider for our own individualized world, our own individual spider web. Everybody, this is the reality for everybody. Everybody finds their lane, does the work and the duty that they need to do in the world in order to get the basic resources and first chakra, red chakra security that they need in order to keep their brains having nutriment to stay alive, to be a part of a bigger cog, and in order to allow like a water wheel Saturn can be like a water wheel where the water is the world and we construct a wheel in order to use the energy of the world to help us. This is the positivity of Saturn is that you have to accept that there's water there and it's a reality. The sooner you get over it, the sooner you can say, ah, I can construct a water wheel to actually use my reality to my advantage. But you have to work to make your own water wheel. You have to work with the ways of the world, the ways of your social reality, of your collective, of what's going on around you, in order to get the sense that you can construct your own wheel in order to make the world around you help you, as well as you helping it. When Pluto is an aspect to Saturn, this whole natural relationship of the self with the nature of the world, of physical reality, of slow, gross elements, of tamas, it comes to a grinding confrontation because for some reason we have had some emotional traumatic experience while we were young uh, through this Plutonian element which caused us, whether it's in a past life or whether it's in our childhood in this life, something along the way caused us to feel powerless in this spider webbing spider web of spider webs. Something has caused us to feel futile as if our spider web that we're holding on to, we have no control over it. And our whole, our individualized personality and ego and sense of self crumbles under the weight of whatever responsibilities or duties that the authority in our lives have subjected us to. Again, some people will experience this internally, whereas their reality is just that they gotta get a job. Jobs can be boring got to do something to stay alive, got to work for somebody. And you might feel futilely like you've just got to be like Arthur Miller's death of a salesman. Just go around selling crap with a smile, a store-bought smile, and go to your family and you smile at your wife and you smile at your kids and say, my God, am I ever depressed? Because <laughs> this is really starting to suck. You know, this is the kind of Saturn reality that can be expressed uh, at the Tomasic level of this aspect. For an unevolved person, this is what's going to kind of happen. I'm futile. My individual spider web doesn't matter. And the world is just going to push me where I can go. My limits are contained by my social reality. And the social reality might actually take advantage of you because you're not doing what it does, which is, in a certain way, the individualized self, the red chakra of the world, of everyone around you, takes care of itself first. I need to be able to eat 
in order that I can help feed others. I need to take care of my own tree, like a good tree knows to take care of, to absorb roots, absorb nutriment from its roots, to water itself, to receive the planting and good nutriment from others, to ask for help, to ask to be a part of something bigger than itself. Every tree is an invested in its ecology, and it is not just an island in itself. It asks for help from everything around it, and it also produces, it serves by giving of its fruit, but it takes care of itself first. Pluto, Saturn aspects might make you not able to take care of your own reality, to say, I am subject to these forces larger than myself. And those forces larger than yourself might be pushing your, under your thumb and say, yes, you are subject to the will of this thing greater than yourself and you better like it. And what happens is that because you're not feeding yourself, because you're not seeing it in the proper context, you destroy yourself and the authority above you embarrasses you by saying that you failed because you didn't consider yourself and you feel ripped off. I was so slaving myself away, having no individuality in order to help keep my parents together, in order to help try not to let my alcoholic father go out and sleep with whoever or kill themselves. And then my alcoholic father comes back home and says, hey, you're an idiot for telling your mother or even having this consciousness that I shouldn't be doing this all these kinds of weird authority things where you feel like you have to be doing something and your authority squashes you. These are the confrontations that can happen. And ultimately, the futility that you feel is supposed to be an engagement of tamasic energy, an overemphasis of tamasic energy, which you eventually get sick of. You close your eyes and say, I deserve this. This miserableness is my reality that I've always been. And then the reality just squashes you and squashes you and squashes you until one day you either have some kind of nervous breakdown or you force yourself to kind of implode in a way. And you get what happens is that over time, the nature of Saturn is to get collect a lot of these experiences and it gets so overblown that you eventually start to see them coming. You start to expect it. You start to accept it. And then as is the nature of things. You just crack inwardly and begin f forcing yourself to do things that you need to do for yourself in order to serve and to not take it personally. This is what the lessons over time, lifetime after lifetime of all these experiences, you'll eventually learn that at some point you have to suffer in an individuated state where you say everyone is suffering like I am. Everyone has to keep their own spider web together. So I'm going to go out and eat some of the flies that are in front of me. I'm going to feel like I have to mobilize at some point. Even if I'm forth facing the blind of the unknown of Pluto going against my basic instincts, somewhere along the line, up with Pluto and aspect to Saturn, you'll probably come into some experience where you'll be forced so go against your inner resistance to moving, to being active, to being an individual. And you're going to be forced to develop a sense of self, to say, hey, I don't deserve to be treated this way, to go out and get groceries yourself, get out from under the thumb of your parents, of whatever authority, emotionally or opportunistically, that is squashing your ability to get on top of yourself. And this happens by delegating authority from a state from a place of above you are above something you're you're above your other employees you're above the materials you work with you're above your body you're above your own mind somewhere whether you know it or not and you have to start delegating authority upon all these things upon other people around you even in your love relationships you know pluto with aspect to saturn can say that your lover has authority over you and you can just develop this over time, especially if this is happening in the seventh house or in Taurus or Venus or even in the Mercury signs or even in the Saturn signs, Capricorn or Aquarius. This kind of things can happen where you and your relationship realize that your partner has a certain type of authority and you have a certain type of authority. You have to delegate commands to them when it suits you both based on your intuition. And you have to be humble enough to accept commands from them when they're correct based on their mutu your mutual intuition. You're always on top at delegating something 
and also you're also on the bottom of something being having command coming to you and you have to take both of these realities impersonally the only way to do that is to experience the internal suffering that only Saturn can give the plus here there's a there's a minus in your earth experience with this aspect but there's always a plus in your spiritual experience this is like get this is like having kidney stones just been doing a lot developed all of a sudden you develop this crappy thing that you know you're gonna have to pee out and it's gonna be the worst experience ever it's gonna be very painful but once you pee it out you go through it piece by piece and ah, it sucks or whatever and you go through like a month of this crappy experience but once you've gone through it boy you know not only are you gonna want to change whatever caused those crystallization crystallized deposits calcium deposits you're gonna stop doing whatever caused the kidney stones but you're also going to be happy to have gone through it it's like once you hit rock bottom the only way there's only one way to go and it's up this is the kind of soul experience that might happen with Saturn here and what goes down what has been going down either whether in this life or some life coming you're gonna to start to move ahead from all of this and lighten your karmic load naturally so uh, unevolved people will see this as daunting oh crap winter's coming this sucks individuated state people rajasic were not quite spiritually evolved but not quite dumb not quite unaware right in the middle people these people will say well the nature of reality is to suffer so I'm just gonna act and it sucks that this has to happen but I know I have to and I'm not gonna let everybody else get on top of me I'm gonna do what I have to do to stay alive do what I gotta do for my family do the suffer the best way that I can passionately however I can to establish my individuality so if I gotta step on other people's heads in order to do that it's the nature of being a spider web being a spider spiders gotta eat and the third evolved state it's the spiritual state where the in this individual has suffered enough in their reality that they are willing to suffer eventually if this is happening in the right place where Saturn is actually well placed and Saturn and you know there's possibly let's say benefic planets in the sign of Capricorn or Aquarius or if Saturn or Pluto have positive trines from benefic planets or their friends especially Venus and Mercury uh, if Saturn is your Atmakarika or your Dharakarika in the Vedic Jaimini sense if Saturn is an important planet if you're Capricorn or Aquarius rising uh, if any of these are the case then this retribution of Saturn trying to get a grip and finally being willing to suffer for one's the duty of the nature of karma once you're willing to do that then you can start resolving huge amounts of karma here you can lighten your load take care of the background of unresolved things in your whole past lives you might get you might have the humbleness to meet lovers from past lives who you have connected with in unconscious erotic ways before who has been chained to your affections emotionally before you can go and meet them in this life and have the diligent Saturn authority coming from a Jupiterian sense of the ultimate source the ultimate source of love and energy and if you have Pluto positively aspected to Saturn here eventually in the evolved state you can go to these people and forgive them and say I'm sorry and resolve them so that they can now be unchained and you guys can work that karma out challenge each other to sacrifice for each other in ways that are not personal in ways that are not emotionally attached and relieve these things these that cause you to desire emotional attachments from things that are impossible everybody has these things from past lives so Pluto and aspect to Saturn eventually is teaching us how to go through pain how to go through tamas and it's ultimately a necessary cleanup phase so whatever suffering you endure here 
through crystallization of your absolute, of everything that you are, is bound to be suffering that is going to lead ultimately to some kind of realization and some kind of attainment. No matter what, this what you might not get it in this life if all of this stuff is really badly placed. Then this is just a result resolution incarnation where you're going to just bash your head against unfortunate experiences and it's just going to wash out in a way that's very gross uh, and unfortunate and unfair. And you're just going to have to accept it, stomach it, and eventually you'll get the picture, which is that reality is not always here for our enjoyment. Reality is reality. And if you're expecting internally, if you're expecting enjoyment, if you're attached to enjoyment, if you're attached to anything, Saturn will teach you what reality actually is, for better or worse. So you better get on the right understanding of it. This is why Jupiter is such an important element of Saturn. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start talking about why, what exactly that's all about. Uh, Jupiter's relationship with Saturn here is important. Um, <clears throat> but ultimately, Jupiter and Saturn are two different things. Jupiter is our personal sense of individuality. What we are as, as a deep soul, as an individual, and how we can express ourself in our role in culture. The fathership that is assigned to the ninth house in, in Vedic astrology and in astrology in general. Westernized, Western astrologers are more inclined to say that Saturn rules father and the 10th house rules father. Uh, and this is more the, the truth of the matter. There used to be a blend in ancient days where there was a time when you know, the ninth house relates to Jupiter, which in Jupiter is called Guru in Vedic astrology. Jupiter, therefore, is connected to the father in a sense, partly because at some historical time frame, there was a point when Ju there was no guru, there was no separation of guru and father. Everyone, not everybody could have a guru. So the father would act as the guru who would tell you where to go in your life. And so the 10th and 9th house blended at some points. But generally, the ninth house relates to what you are even beyond your family, beyond your opportunities in the world. What is your role, your instinctive spiritual role that gives you meaning, that gives you purpose to the duties that Saturn functionally, realistically gets a hold of. And Saturn and Jupiter are always kind of flip-flopping on each other. You know, you know, we can kind of see this when we look at... A picture that I have prepared once my computer gets with my rhythm here we can see a in the picture of the symbol of Jupiter there notice that there's a crescent moon shape uh, that's on top of what is considered to be the cross of matter here we can see with Saturn it's the same thing the cross of matter but the crescent moon is beneath the cross of matter. The crescent of moon, of course, represents the jivatman, the sense of self that's supposed to the divine mother principle in us, the inner child, the self, the personality that blissfully goes for what it wants to go for, the individual. <clears throat> now we can see with Jupiter, the crescent moon is above the cross of matter. It's the inner self is exalted. But with Saturn, the crescent moon is below the cross of matter. So that the crescent, the self, the inner self is purged under the collective pressures of something outside of ourselves, out of the nature of the material world, outside of ourselves. And both of these need to find their own continuum, but they're different. If you have a very strong Jupiter, you might find a lot of internalized meaning and purpose, and you might do simple little things. This is more of the Jupiter, more, more, of a, more of a Piscean, Jupiterian sense of Neptune, where it doesn't matter what I create on the outside, doesn't matter what exalted status I perceive myself on the outside, doesn't matter how I use my resources functionally, 
as long as I have the internal bliss of God pouring out from my heart, Jupiter, and my action finds a satisfying role in the world, then it doesn't matter how much I accomplish in that regard or how much I suffer and sacrifice myself to something greater than myself. Because it's the action, it's the mantra, it's my internal purgation that counts. And that's important because that's what gives the meaning. Jupiter, the ninth house, is what develops an enjoyment and a purpose and bring it it's the element that Ju that the ninth house is the element that Saturn stands on, the tenth house stands on, as well as the eleventh house. It's the ninth house that is an important Notice that the ninth is a mutable house. It's the transition point between the seventh house and the, the seventh house quadrant and the tenth house quadrant. So the ninth house is an important point. Anyone with Pluto in aspect to Saturn will be well served to look to Jupiter to help find the pers the perseverance, the personal meaning in your life in order to help get through the Plutonian futility that you feel with Saturn, with finding some place in the world, some role in the world. As long as you're willing to sacrifice and surrender it, your, your, your action, and move forward, even feel the crippling aspects of reality that don't, that stop you from getting out the Jupiter. Face them, because this is, you obviously need Saturn in your life. I mean, everybody needs Jupiter and Saturn in their own different ways. You might be in a place in your life where this Pluto and Saturn aspect is not hugely active and you're in a Jupiter period and you get to enjoy all the meaning and purpose and all this stuff. Ultimately though, when it comes to time for Saturn, when some important Saturn aspect or transit happens or when uh, your Saturn Dasha comes up, it's a Vedic thing, you know, whenever the Saturn moment happens, you need to be able to take the enjoyment and passion that you got out of Jupiter and apply it functionally, constructively to something, a, a system outside of yourself. And you need to do it diligently. You can't just skip steps. And this is, uh, you know, what can happen is that there's a deep-seated fear of larger authorities. And uh, this is because of Pluto being mixed with Saturn. The unconscious emotional security has felt like I am not an authority, and therefore authority is just going to squash me. But when authority comes, you need to be a willing chess piece in the authority's game. And you can't do that if you just accept things blindly, willingly, because you need to listen in every moment in order and be an individual in order to be a part of the larger authority. And your individuality relates to everything that you are. <clears throat> this is why I'm kind of bringing up this whole train thing and essentially why I'm also bringing up Ernst Wilhelm's Graha Sutras. What happens with Saturn is essentially what I'm trying to show you guys here is that there is a system of planets giving, holding energy for each other. And we're going to talk about what Saturn means in terms of its place in the Panchatattvas. And it's just going to give some a bit more of a glimpse on what it means to have Pluto obstructing Saturn. So we can see here, this is from Ernst Wilhelm's Graha Sutras. Notice that Jupiter at the top is giving energy to Saturn. Saturn gives energy to Mars. Mars gives energy to Venus. Venus gives to Mercury. Mercury gives to Jupiter. Now this schema does make sense, and I'm going to explain it in a moment. But what I'm trying to show here essentially is that Saturn is the element of air, which feeds Mars. Okay? And this is coming again from the ancient wisdom of Sanskrit. In fact, the particular passages we're reading from here is the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 3, verse 26. Uh, stanza 26, verse 36. 
<clears throat> and this is where this idea of Saturn is coming from, as air, which is represented as tangibility and as touch. I'm just giving you, guys, giving you guys a quick crash course here. Eventually, I'm going to do more on Ernst Wilhelm's Graha Sutras, but we're going to relate this to Saturn. So we can see here, ether represents hearing. Saturn represents touch, air. Fire, Mars for sight. Venus for taste. Mercury for smell. Saturn represents touch, knowledge through tangibility. And what Ernst Wilhelm further teaches us is that air shakes and moves things. It penetrates everywhere. It carries the substance of sound and it vitalizes the indriyas, the sense organs. These are, this is what uh, is given to us from the Srimad Bhagavatam, from the sages who were talking about what Saturn means in the five element schema. <clears throat> so air is the cause of differentiation where Jupiter which feeds Saturn sees everything as one Jupiter is the thing that says I'm an individual even though I feel the oneness of all things I need to find myself as an individual within all of this and it's this individuality that is obstructed when Pluto is involved with Saturn the word is that air, the element of air, shakes, displaces, and separates. And Saturn rules all shakers, mixers, and separators, people who organize things and people who differentiate things in society, in culture, in the collective. The shakers, and this is very much people who fight to make huge global collective changes in the world and in the individual local community. This is why, partly why Uranus has a, a co-authorship, a co-partnership with Saturn in Aquarius, although Saturn is the primary ruler. Air penetrates everywhere, carrying the substance of sound, ruled by Jupiter, touch, ruled by Saturn, color, ruled by Mars, taste, ruled by Venus, and smell, ruled by Mercury. Saturn rules the radio waves that travel in the air. That's why Aquarius has the waves as its symbol. And Saturn carries the substance of sound and light, waves, which are the substance of color. Saturn carries all of these things through the senses. It carries the substance of the senses of the material world. Thus, it hearing all the senses come through Saturn and therefore well, Saturn moves the movement of the life force through the nervous system through which the organs of sense function this goes to say that any obstructions to Saturn again in your relationship with authority are going to cause a can can cause a full eclipse of your capacity to be in your own body to feel like you have control of your own body to feel like you have a site that's the body-mind connection can get completely up disrupted and halted when there are any obstructions to Saturn in a chart. Again, depending on whether this is aimed in a proper place or not, uh, this can be good or bad. Somebody who has a detached sense of their senses, uh, eventually they can bring themselves to willfully do incredibly yogic things transmute their bodily energies and alchemies in very detached, objective, emotionless ways. It can make for incredible yogic capacities if this Pluto-Saturn aspect is well-placed and well-understood. So that you can put yourself, you, you will unconsciously put yourself through the kinds of things in this lifetime that would bring a rich and positive detachment of th the self's experiencing of the senses. And this is why this aspect can cause great resolution of karma and great accomplishment and status in the world just through your raw, diligent action. <clears throat> this also teaches us about uh, Saturn's relationship to the ultimate source. 
And this is kind of the final thing that I wanted to sort of talk about here before we start getting into our actual reading today. You can see that Jupiter, Ether, feeds Saturn, the Indriyas. The intuitive superconscious feeds the Indriyas, the senses, and gives them meaning and purpose. As our book says, if Jupiter is weak, there will be a lack of faith, purpose, and meaning in life. If Jupiter is weak, there will be a lack of faith, purpose, and meaning in life. This will disturb Saturn and result in a poor sense of duty. Because Saturn is just going to keep doing what it's doing. If you got no Jupiter in your chart, then you could still, but you have a strong Saturn, then you could still just keep moving forward with your duty, even though you might feel it is meaningless and mindless. It's Jupiter, essentially. You know, this is why Saturn and the dance of Saturn and Jupiter in everyone's chart is reflected in the classic story of Sisyphus. Sisyphus is bolder. And Jupiter is going to be either enjoying... Okay, so the old story of Sisyphus, right? It's this guy where he was enslaved by the gods, the Titans. And the Titans of Greek mythology said, you have to roll this boulder up this hill. Push, 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 push. All the way up, all the way up. Don't ask why. Don't ask questions. Whip, 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 whip. You are being confronted by a body that has urges and necessities and needs and sexual needs and passions that need to be expressed and if you don't express them then i'm just gonna whip you harder and sisyphus pushes the boulder ah, wow, wow, i don't understand i don't understand and just push it up the hill but they finally start to hill that start is starting to seize they're getting to the top of it they're like oh my god this suffering is finally almost over then they get to the top of it and the titans look at them and say did you enjoy that well i hope you did because now you're gonna have to do it again and they push the boulder down all the accomplishments, all the work, all of the external status, the symbols, the money, the wealth, the success, the reputation gets flooded under. Useless. It's like the old poem, Euripides, where the nameless narrator is walking through and he finds an old plaque in the middle of a desert. And he finds this plaque and it's 10,000 years old. And it says, Behold, I, I think the name is Euripides or... Sis, sis, ah, some, some name. I'm going to say Euripides. Behold, I'm Euripides. Behold the luster of my great empire. And the poet looks and sees nothing but the flat desert plains and the wind rushing through the sand dunes. Because whatever that person had built up is ultimately pointless. But what is seen 10,000 years later is less important, although maybe that's big Saturn, big Saturn, Pluto aspect. Maybe they were a big cheese 10,000 years ago. But ultimately, the big question is, is how much did it relate to their personal, spiritual experience and enjoyment? And that has to do with Jupiter. Ultimately, though, even if they didn't enjoy it at a Jupiter level and they didn't align it with a deeper spiritual wisdom, Saturn probably still caused them to move forward to work hard for the duty that was right in front of them, to open their bodies up and to get them engaged with the life and opportunities outside them. So that even if, again, even if they were lacking that Jupiter, they could still accomplish great things and resolve great karma in this life. So this is an imp this, the, the moral of the story here, especially with regards to the senses, is to say that when Pluto is an aspect to Saturn, you have to go through some hard, material, tangible realities of pain and of success in whatever little rhythms. But it's always going to be two forwards, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And it has to. Because, let's, this is our final discussion here today before the reading, is that we can imagine Saturn... And the need to accommodate it is like a, being on a train. And the train has crashed. And you happen to be at the very back of this train. And you went to the back for some reason to get something. 
whatever it might have been, to get <laughs> a sexual experience or to get a bottle of alcohol, you had, whatever it was, that you had to go back to the front of this train, back to the first chakra, back for some kind of survival purpose to get something, some need in the world. And now all of a sudden the train has crashed. And you need to go from the 12th cabin back to the first cabin in order to see, let's say, your daughter. Your daughter is there and she's helpless and you've got to get through all of these cabins to get there. Now, you know that, you know, Mars sees, this is the little, I'm going to, this is me explaining the cycle here. We know that Mars sees what has to be done. Venus accepts, it says it can be done. Do I have the resources? Do I have the time? Mercury plans and says, well, I know that Venus wants me to go there. So, and I know that I, I can push myself to get there if, so long as I stick to this plan. And this figure, when I get to this cabin, I'm going to have to do this. When I get to this cabin, do I have enough oxygen in my bag? Do I have enough of everything? Can I manage things going along in order to get to that first cabin? Jupiter understands and innovates. How can I relate this plan to myself? What does this plan, this opportunity, am, if, as I manage all these things, it is, is it going to give me a capacity for me to use my best self? You know, if I, am, I, am I a strong man in this situation? Therefore, should, I should modulate my plan using the plan, the Mercury that I've established to get to the top cabin. Should I use my strength now to help me b push through? This is Jupiter using the skill of what you are understanding what you are in relation to the moment am i a more am i a weak person physically therefore but i have strength in diplomacy therefore i can walk around and say hey if you help me get my daughter from the if you help me get to the front of the cabin so i can go help my daughter i will make it worth it for you in the long run just help me do this you know like what does can jupiter apply to mercury's plan to get you to where you need to go ultimately though we all know, for all these planets, knowing what to do, seeing what to do, feeling what to do, Venus, planning what to do, Mercury, understanding what to do, Jupiter. Finally, when it comes to it, Jupiter invokes us with the energy, I have a plan, I have something that I can do here, now I just have to do it. Now I have to, I've done enough planning. I've, done, I've talked to all my people. Now I've got to go turn that knob and see what the unknown behind that first door of that first cabin awaits me. I have all my other things ready, but all my planning is useless if I don't open that first door. All my feelings are useless if I don't open that first door. All of my seeing, my, my Mars dutifulness, my feeling of the duty, my application of duty. All of this is not going to be any mean anything if I can't get on top of my indriyas, my senses, my relationship as an individual to the spider webbing network of nature that is my body in relationship to the opportunities all around me. If I'm not willing to suffer, to be in the material world, to get through that cabin by cabin by cabin by cabin, then I'm not going to seek, find the realization, the accomplishment that I seek. Now, you might have gone through many lives doing all the other things, getting that little bit of Jupiter out in that way, getting that little bit of Venus out in that way. The fact that Pluto is coming into aspect with Saturn means that this trans transmigrating narrative of your unconscious karmas have come to a point where this Saturnian need to actually go through each cabin step by step with the patience of not skipping any, not using any magic to try and get out of this painful moment. It's time to pay the piper, be diligent in experiencing the reaper, and sit with the hand of death and pain as you push through the discomfort that comes from learning your collective 
opportunities around you. Learning how to be in relationship with authority. Because that train, that conductor, the humans on that train, you have to go through each train and you have to talk to the people on each train. And if you might even have to help others in order for them to help you go and get your daughter at the front of that train. If you just try and just jump through all the cabins, ignoring all the people, ignoring all the steps, you know, some obstruction might come on the eighth train, the ninth train, the seventh, whatever train, where you have some karmic difficulty that is now coming to surface because Saturn has never, has just been skipping. Saturn's been skipping all the work. Now, at some point, you're going to have to face you not having gone through the Saturn experience. And if you're not careful, nature will, sh will spill all the energy that you've gotten to that certain point if you haven't been including Saturn in it, where you might have done a whole bunch of spiritual work to, to vitalize your, your indriyas and even to open kundalini energy and to open up to the spiritual energies within you. But if you don't are not willing to sacrifice for some kind of duty that's in your immediate collective world, or you're not willing to deal with the field of study, to work hard to have a skill in the, Plut in the Saturnian sense, so you can stand out in a field amongst other people who are also checking your work. If you can't do all this and relate to the large authorities outside of you, and relate to the authorities underneath you as an authority. If you can't find yourself in these things patiently, then your energy, your raw energy, your Saturn energy is going to spill out into other places. Working, You're going to give it to some capitalist asshat, like death of a salesman, like Arthur Miller, hoping that you can just go and work for this company and you can sell your soul by selling this vacuum cleaner to door to door, hating your life, but getting that smile. And if, and you'll just do that until this incarnation's over and you'll miss it because you'd never accepted that part of your reality. You could have had a good life, but the fact that you couldn't go door to door and be that salesman and actually feel the sacrifice for it, you know, the money you get from that, if you don't waste emotional energy, being so angry at yourself internally for being forced to have this shitty life. All this anger you do throughout the day, selling those vacuums door to door, causes you to be eat, to be to get back at your wife for all the energy that you have. It's your karma to get back at your son. You know, the world has put me through this crevasse and now I get to discipline my son and I have to because it was done to me. All of this emotional anger has nothing to do with your reality. It's all coming from inside of you. And you, through this Pluto aspect, are going to either be full of that emotional backlash internally until you can finally let go of it because it might kill you and give you a nervous breakdown. Once this evolutionary thing happens where Saturn is natally ahead, uh, or rather... Uh, yeah, Saturn is natally ahead of the Pluto and comes out of the Pluto conjunction or the Pluto square, the Pluto opposition, whatever the aspect is. Once Saturn passes it, this shows that the incarnation is getting past the Plutonian resistance, allowing itself to act and allowing itself to not be emotionally frozen and reactive so that as you go and sell your thing door to door, Cha -la 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 -la, you don't take it personally that someone else on top of you is pushing you to do all these things. And eventually, you save up your own bit of money, sit, get your no own roots attached to water around the soil and the earth around you so you can finally give of your fruits. And then people will come, take the seed of that fruit that you worked so hard for, plant it other places for you. And then you will get opportunities to get you out of that salesman job that you hate that you really is not your spiritual purpose or intent but the only way for you to get on top of that to get to be a bigger player in a bigger spider web so you're not wasting your energy for some corporation that doesn't care about you you have to get in relationship with your own you have to understand your own relationship 
to authority, to larger authorities than yourself. And as we are going to learn in our reading with Jeffrey Wolf Green in the next episode, we might find that that larger authority is going that's all around you, permeating you all the time, it appears in this incarnation, in this life, in the form of your father, in the form of your religious priesthood that stands above you, in the form of your your corporate boss, uh, in the form of your limitations, in the form of a bummed leg that you've always had since you were two. All of these crippling authorities and fate and karma that is standing over top of you, these are merely temporary representations, reflections, forms of what is uh, the essential universal. It's the universe. It's the source. The nature of things. The nature of your karma. The nature of having to evolve. This is the source of this larger authority which you're experiencing in this life. You aren't necessarily getting in relationship with your boss, with your father, with your mother, with your lover, with your brothers, with all these people who you have emotional security obstructions to being in an understanding relationship with. It's your relationship to the source, to the source of the ultimate knowledge, the same self that is in you, which is the same self, the same evolving script that you are a part of, that is a, that everyone is a part of. It is your relationship to the source and being underneath it and on top of it at the same time, being an individual, but also being a cell in the larger unfolding drama of human collective human evolution. It's your relationship to that that is going to ultimately get you through this, and that is ultimately the lessons that are implied by you having Pluto and aspect to Saturn. Now, this turned out to be a much longer video than I intended it to, uh, but that's just how it goes. So now that I've done this little introduction, if you guys are willing, uh, in the next episode, I'm going to actually be reading word for word from Jeffrey Wolf Green's Pluto, the Evolutionary Journey of the Soul. So stay tuned, because in the next one, we're going to be talking about Pluto in aspect to Saturn. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction, uh, this little preliminary clip. I've been enjoying doing this in this sort of way. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think that I'm, I'm overblowing these by doing this like really long 50-minute intro. I'm curious what you guys think. So for now, I'm Dustin Cormier, and this is How to Rock Astrology. Thank you folks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Keep your eyes on the skies.